Some jobs simply aren't worth it, are they? Even the most ambitious actor must know when it's time to pack it in and give up a role for their own good. But unfortunately, these talented thespians often struggle to admit when enough is enough. Whether it's barely escaping a physical accident by insisting on doing their own stunts, or risking psychological damage by taking on a dangerously challenging role, you definitely cannot question their commitment to the cause. But you have every right to question their sanity. So buckle up and join me, Gareth from WhatCulture.com, as we take a look at 10 movie roles that seriously screwed up actors. Number 10. Michael Fassbender as Bobby Sands, Hunger When Michael Fassbender took on the role of IRA political prisoner Bobby Sands in British artist Steve McQueen's feature debut, Hunger, the title should have tipped him off as to what lay ahead. In order to accurately portray the iconic figure, Fassbender dropped over 30 pounds from his already lean frame, putting himself through tremendous physical strain in order to evoke Sands' appearance near the end of his months-long hunger strike. Fassbender relied on an extremely limiting 900 calories a day to achieve the massive weight loss. And the work required by the film did nothing less to ease this struggle. The hard work would go on to pay off, big time, with the film winning one of the Cannes Film Festival's highest honours and receiving endless acclaim for the Ender Walsh pen script, propelling both Fassbender and his director to mainstream stardom soon after. Number 9. Shelley Duvall as Wendy Tarrant's The Shining in order to successfully adapt Stephen King's then-recently-released magnum opus, The Shining, Stanley Kubrick drove his star Shelley Duvall to the brink of madness for her portrayal of Jack Torrance's long-suffering wife, Wendy. The director bullied Duvall, isolating her from the crew and dismissing her ideas, as well as putting her and her co-stars through countless repetitive tasks to evince a more convincing depiction of hysteria. Duvall characterized the shoot as weeks of constant crying, and a dismayed King dismissed the film as misogynistic in its reduction of Wendy to a screaming dishrag. Unfortunately, Duvall's public struggles with her mental health continued after filming finished. While the extent of Kubrick's responsibility is impossible to estimate, her story is proof that no performance is worth pushing anyone past their limits for. Number 8. Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman, The Man on the Moon Method acting isn't an easy process at the best of times, so playing a real-life actor famous for blurring the lines between reality and performance was always going to be a particularly tall order, and doubly so for an actor who had struggled at times with their own mental health. But that's exactly the big ask that Jim Carrey took on in his 1999 passion project Man on the Moon, an unconventional biopic of the infamously unconventional comedian and actor Andy Kaufman. Kerry claims he felt compelled to channel the spirit of Kaufman, saying the iconic anti-comedian got into his mind and wouldn't leave for years to come. During his time in the role, Kerry got into a fight with Jerry Lawler after becoming lost in kayfabe, spoke with Kaufman's actual family as Andy, and sent an impersonator in his place when invited to the Playboy Mansion. Kaufman would be proud. We were just dumbfounded. Number 7. Verga Famiga as Lorraine Warren, The Conjuring whether it was the dramatic exorcism scene in the film's closing moments or the more subtle earlier scares, looking at you, clapping game, James Wan's masterclass in horror known as The Conjuring is one of the most nerve-shredding cinematic experiences of the last decade. Pretty impressive for a film in which not a single soul perishes, and the tension obviously made its way under the skin of the thespians starring in the flick if Verga Famiga's experience is anything to go by. Affected by playing half of the real-life husband and wife paranormal investigation team, Famiga told press she was plagued by mysterious trios of claw marks while making the film. As early as her first call with one, she noticed the strange markings appearing on her laptop, only for them to later resurface as bruises on her thigh. I would probably call that a sign to steer clear of a sequel, but hey ho, money talks louder than claw marks at the end of the day. Number 6. Joaquin Phoenix as Joker Joker. Owing more to Martin Scorsese's darkest period than any silver screen superhero story which came before it, Todd Phillips' Joker was an unexpected smash when it hit cinemas in late 2019. Succeeding with audiences, critics, and even the Academy, the film broke countless box office records. However, such a successful excursion into the dark side, depicting mental health struggles, poverty, and extreme violence, came at a cost to the cast and creator. In the eponymous role, Joaquin Phoenix was apparently more mercurial than ever before on set. And offset, for that matter, since the actor often walked out of scenes during shooting to compose himself, struggling to maintain control. The behavior may seem extreme, but it makes a little more sense when you consider the staggering weight class Phoenix put himself through to accurately embody the character's wiry frame. 
When you're hungry, you're just hungry, man. Number five, Heath Ledger as Joker, The Dark Knight. We've got another Joker now, but Heath Ledger was a promising young star when he took on the role of Batman's most iconic nemesis. Having recently been lauded for his incredible performance in 2004's tender romantic tragedy, Brokeback Mountain. The actor threw himself into the part while simultaneously filming I'm Not There and The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassus, another pair of physically and mentally demanding roles. He complained of an inability to sleep to his co-stars, confining in them that the roles left him unable to relax and stop thinking. Ledger resorted to the habitual use of sleeping pills in order to get better rest, but nonetheless fell ill and struggled to shift sickness. The psychological demands of his intense schedule is thought to have contributed to his accidental overdose in 2008. Number 4. Pretty much the whole cast, Full Metal Jacket Lest we accuse Kubrick of unfairly singling out his female stars, it's probably worth noting the hell he put his marines through for his seminal anti-war film Full Metal Jacket. Arriving after Platoon and Apocalypse Now, Full Metal Jacket offered a colder and more uncompromising vision of the war America lost to Vietnam, eschewing the latter's psychedelia and the former's melodrama for a brutal, bleak story. This tone was reflected in the filmmaking process, where actor Vincent Donofrio was expected to shave his head and gain a staggering 70 pounds in order to play struggling cadet Private Lawrence. The actor noted that women lost interest in him and he was patronized in conversation, while the rapid weight gain took a sizable toll on his physical health too. Lawrence's on-screen nemesis, his drill sergeant played by R. Lee Ernie, fared no better. He was told to practice lines while Kubrick's assistant pelted him with tennis balls, each of which he was expected to catch and return instantly without missing a single word. Once each scene had been run through 20 times with no mistakes, pauses or fumbles, Kubrick was willing to film. Isn't filmmaking fun? Number 3. Vivian Lee as Blanche Dubois, a streetcar named Desire Acting alongside heavyweight talent like Marlon Brando is a huge ask for an actor, but Gone with the Wind starlet Vivian Lee was more than up for the task when the opportunity presented itself in 1954, via a big screen adaptation of Tennessee Williams' classic Broadway hit A Streetcar Named Desire. Having played the role on stage, she was well prepared to fight director Elia Kazan's initial objections to her approach toward the character. In fact, Kazan would later concede that Lee's was one of the finest performances he ever witnessed. However, this success came at a great cost to the actor's personal life, mental health, and well-being. Lee briefly retired from acting after the film, taking a break to treat underlying mental health issues which had at this stage plagued her for years. It may be impossible to tell what part the film played in taking a toll on Lee's mental health, but perhaps it's telling that when Lee suffered an episode on set years later, she was convinced she was still on the set of Kazan's adaptation. Number 2. Daniel Day-Lewis as Jerry Conlon in The Name of the Father It's almost impossible to tell which of actor Daniel Day-Lewis's performance was the most crazy committed. For the last of the Mohicans, he built an actual canoe and lived in the wilderness in order to embody his character. While playing cerebral palsy-afflicted Irish artist Christy Brown, Day-Lewis learned to write with his foot and never left his wheelchair for the duration of the shoot, earning himself a Best Actor Oscar for all his troubles. What could possibly top this level of commitment? Well, it's not an easy feat, but neither was what the actor put himself through for In the Name of the Father. Playing wrongly accused and imprisoned Irishman Jerry Conlon, Day-Lewis lost a whopping £50 before voluntarily spending two days and sleepless nights in solitary confinement, and nine hours being interrogated by a pair of real special branch cops. The commitment paid off with yet another Oscar nod, one of many throughout his illustrious screen career. Number 1. Robert De Niro as Jake LaMotta, Raging Bull Beloved director Martin Scorsese was at a personal and professional low point when Raging Bull came into his purview. Having been embarrassed by the expensive folly of his post-taxi driver flop, New York, New York. Struggling with a cocaine problem, the director was initially uninterested in the biopic of prizefighter and anti-hero Jake LaMotta. However, Scorsese soon found himself relating to the pugilistic protagonist despite himself, and would go on to say that taking on the project pretty much saved his life. That still doesn't justify any of the struggles he put his star Robert De Niro through, mind you. The actor was required to gain over 60 pounds, that's four stone if you're British, for the role, via an eating tour of Italy upon which the actor embarked. Hang on, a few weeks of enforced pasta and pizza three times a day. Could be worse, right? You'd think so, but the weight had such an adverse effect on De Niro's small frame that production had to be fast-tracked in order to minimize the long-lasting damage being wreaked on his breathing, posture, and even his ability to speak. Great pizza and pasta indulgence comes at a severe price. 
And that's our list. Know of any other movie roles that seriously screwed up actors? Let us know all about them in the comments section below. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And be sure to head on over to whatculture.com to check out more articles just like this one. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you soon.